Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to wave your hands on that? And Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord on that. Imagine not being able to breathe. Amen. Because you depend on that breath. And that's how we should feel about God. Amen. 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 And imagine not being able to have anything to sustain you. Amen. No daily bread. That's how we should depend on God. Amen. And imagine having nothing and depending on some, somebody or someplace for everything. That's how we should feel about God. And so I'm grateful that I love the Lord and I can just kind of, you know, I've never done it because I hate the water, but... You know, kids or people who love to swim can just fall back in the water. Like, the water's going to catch them and they'll be all right. I can't do that with water, but I can do it with God. Amen. And so I thank God for the faith to having God. Good morning to you. And I'm glad to see everybody today. Um, I'm going to talk a lot. just want to share something that I uh, got from God this week. You know, God always takes preachers through stuff. That's right. That's right. And you, you won't get it until we live it, right? That's right. Because <laughs> we can't preach about stuff that we don't, don't know, about. know about. Come on now. So, uh, you know, in this particular space, under this pastor, where I'm blessed to have the opportunity to talk to you, he don't tell you nothing he don't know about. Praise you God. You can tell by the weight, the magnitude of his sermons that he know what he's talking about. Praise you God. If you ever, like, take... Take note of the references he throws at you in the sermons. Go back and read what he tells you to read. And then when he gives, he is giving you the cool version of some very deep stuff. And if you Praise just go back God. and read it, you'll see he knows what he's talking about. Praise God. Um, so we're not going to mm -hmm. talk about nothing we don't know about. So God has a way of taking preachers through it and to it. <laughs> so he can feed to you. That's right. Amen. Boy, oh boy, did God do a doozy on me this <laughs> past couple of weeks. So. Uh, if you could turn to Romans 12, we're just going to look at one verse, uh -huh. okay? Because I'm uh -huh. just a guest in this, behind this mantle, so I don't need to do a lot, because it's not my mantle, I'm just visiting, <laughs> so I'm just going to do a little bit. Um, Praise God. So thank you, Pastor Al, for the opportunity. Praise God. I thank God for this week. This is the week that I celebrated, like I said earlier, I believe, five years in ministry as Amen. a pastor. I was ordained. Amen to the office of pastor on October 17, 2015. And I'm grateful to God for, Amen. yes, it hasn't been an easy one, but I I have more than I had five years ago. Amen. So, Praise God. If you say yes to God, you're going to win the jackpot. Like, the, 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 the lot of you that people play, I don't know if y'all play it, uh, but the, that whole billion, million, whatever that we've seen on the billboards, Right. what God gives you is way more than that. That's you right. You only go so far. You know what I'm saying? That's so, right. I thank God for what I've done in right. five years. I'm a much different person, pastor, a woman, Amen. Uh, lover of people than I was five years ago. And I praise God for the journey. So here we have 12 and 2. Romans 12, 2. Amen. I'm reading the NRSV version. Amen. And the word of God reads as thus. Do not be conformed to this world. That's right. But be transformed by the renewing of your minds. So that you may discern what is the will of God. Amen. What is good and acceptable and perfect. I'm getting excited already. Amen. So, uh, God gave me this title. Actually, God asked me a question because, you know, I'll be doing the most. Like, Girl, have you lost your mind? Come on now. So, that's the sermon title. Have you lost your mind? Come on now. That's what God asked me. And I was like, uh. <laughs> God asks you questions like this. I want to sit down and be, uh, <laughs> So, let me tell you something. I had a very interesting childhood. I think I'll share bits and pieces of it. But look, so I grew up on the welfare. Right. You know, in the hood, North New Jersey, Brick City, that's what we call it. Mm -hmm. In the projects. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty project. It was one of the newer ones in the city, but it was projects. Right. And I was pre K. Preacher's kid, that's what that means. Um, shout out to the pre-Ks out there. Amen. Uh, and on the welfare in the projects. And we couldn't always have what we wanted, right? Right. We couldn't have what the other kids had. You mm -hmm. know, at the time, we wanted the fresh sneakers and all the dope toys and the, the 
ooh, la, la, said Sue, jeans, and the candies, jeans, and the, you know, the fresh Adidas sneakers, and, you know, light bright toy, and the rock and sock and robots, and the baby la, da. We wanted all the fancy stuff that we see on the TV. Right. Um, but we couldn't have it because we couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just made me feel some kind of way as a kid. You go to school and you see that what the other kids got on, and you, you know, you had to get your clothes from the Goodwill. I had to get my clothes from the Goodwill. Um, I couldn't just walk in the store and just pick something off the rack and buy it. You know, we'd go to the mall and we could window shop, um, but we couldn't. Buy, I couldn't buy nothing. Or go to the, the McDonald's and we could like share a Happy Meal. That's right. <laughs> you know, I remember being on a church bus on our way to a church service, and we had to. My sister and I had to share a sandwich. Come on. You now. know, we couldn't splurge. We couldn't on, waste now. any money. And so I thought at the time, like, dang, I don't know, they, Michelle love us. She'll care about us. Come on now. But when I became an adult, thought about that thing, I realized that. Three things. I had providence. Come on. I had my food, clothing, and shelter. Uh huh. Day to day. She never been this to me with that. I had her protection. Come on. She was a very fierce defender. You better not do nothing or say nothing to Dot's kids. Amen. My mother's Amen. name is Dot. <laughs> I had her presence. Come on. She was home every morning when I woke up. Come on. She would even go do what adults did while we went to school. But when I came back home from school, she was and when there. I went to bed at night, she was, she was in her room. Amen. You know, back in those days, you could just walk in your mama's room. That's right. And they had, we had cell phones, so they had that phone with the touch buttons or the rotary with the long cord <laughs> that she had in her room. That's you true. could not go in there and get it because you were supposed to be in the phone anyway. You should get for that. But the TV was off. The big TV was in her room anyway, so was the phone. And so you didn't go in that room, but you knew she was in there. That's right. So she was up, she was there when I woke up with my eyes, and she was there when I closed them. Come on now. And so, in order to respect and appreciate who she was in my life, uh -huh. I had to let go of my assumptions about who she was supposed to be. Come on now. Yeah, catch that. And so, mm -hmm. hold mm -hmm. on to that for just a second. Yes, ma'am. So this verse in Romans, it comes on the heel of a mandate from Apostle Paul to the church at Rome. That's right. He was the most infamous apostle that Jesus had never seen. <laughs> he had never met Jesus, Jesus had never met him, but this guy was like a converted assassin. Like he was like That's killing right. Christians. And one day on his way to kill some more, he got stopped. He got stopped. God was like, what did you do? That's right. I, you know, turn his whole life around. So when he used to kill us, he was our most fiercest supporter, right? Right. And so he's on his way to a trip to Spain, but he's he's talking to the Romans and he doesn't you know, he ain't been there, but he just wants to kind of, like, spin his case or what have you. And so, just want them to hear him out. So, the church was being challenged at the time, right? Right. To stay focused as new followers of Christ. Rome was like the center of life at that time. There's That's a lot right. going on. That's right. Rome was like, Teach like I've said this before, Las Vegas, L.A., New York, Teach. and uh, Miami Beach all in one place. Teach. All that, right? Teach. And uh, if you want to throw a cruise in there, yeah, that too. Uh -huh. yeah, all of that, all of that, it was all of that. So, people were doing the new thing in an environment with a lot of distractions. Right. It, it was rough, y'all. And so, with the pressure they were under, the persecution and temptation that they had to push through at the time, the folks were having some moments. It's okay to have moments. They were having some moments. We think we got moments enough. They were having some moments. And so, have you ever had a moment where your thoughts were closing in on you? Like, right, you, right. You, you know. You kind of, do I do this or that? Or do I go here or there? Or, uh, is this too, uh, it just, uh, uh, you, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, all of that. The people were going through all of that. And so, it's important in those moments to recalibrate. And so, think about, say to yourself, recalibrate. The word recalibrate means to make small changes to an instrument so that it measures accurately. To make small changes to an instrument so that it measures accurately to make small changes to an instrument so that it measures accurately. So here's some examples of recalibration. It's like when you set time back in the far, you know, in a minute, I don't know if we've done it yet, but we'll have to set our clocks back. I think the time is coming up. We already did it. We might have already done it. Uh, so every time there's a change of the seasons, fall and spring, we have to set our clocks to reset them. So 
we can follow along with time, right? Sometimes we have to reset our watches or our clocks. Sometimes we have to reset scales and make sure that we're looking at the right number when we're trying to check how much we weigh. Yeah, that's not just me. <laughs> Sometimes we have to check, re reset a, a recalibrated thermometer or a calculator, right? In order to use it properly. So when the instrument that measures is stuck, hear me, it cannot measure properly or give a proper assessment or grade. Something in the mechanics of that instrument has to be adjusted. I'm gonna read that one more time slow because I want you to really understand what I'm saying this morning. It helped me so much this week. When an instrument that measures something is stuck, hold your brain right there, squeeze your head right quick. It cannot measure properly or give a proper assessment, hold your brain, hold your head, or grade. When it's stuck, it can't measure right. Something in the mechanics of it has to be adjusted. When we get stuck, we can't see, we can't think, or make decisions soundly. We have to adjust ourselves. You ought to ask somebody near you or ask yourself, where are you stuck? Where am I stuck? So, in other cases or situations, we have to discard the instrument. Just throw it away all together, do the damage. Sometimes when you try to recalibrate it, you try to reset, it doesn't work because the instrument is worn out. It's no use, not useful anymore. Okay? In other instances, we have to release the entire thought process and try again. You ever try to get through something and it's just not working for you? And so you try, 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 and then at some point you're like, okay, let me rethink this thing. Or, oh, okay, let me, let, me, let me start over. Let me read, let me start over. Or you ever try to have a conversation with somebody and it's just not getting you, right? You know, and then some, some of us, I've been good to this myself, you feel like people are not really getting it. You know, you, you, you keep saying the same thing over and over, and then you get frustrated that they don't get it, so you get louder and louder, and you raise your voice like, that's not what I'm saying. But then, because you want to get your point across, you have to go ahead on and just try to say it a different way. you got to reset yourself and just try it one more time. So, once again, when the instrument that measures is stuck, it cannot measure properly or give a proper assessment or grade. Something in the mechanics of the instrument has to be adjusted. When we get stuck, we can't see, think, or make decisions. We have to adjust ourselves. So, in some cases, I have to lose my mind. My mind. I have to transform, renew, prove, and perfect and lose my understanding. Mm -hmm. I have to transform, which means I gotta change my structure or how it's built. I gotta change the way my mind is set up. Yeah. I have to renew. I have to make something new or make it fresh or strong again. I have to prove. I have to demonstrate the truth or existence of something with the evidence or my argument. Follow me. I have to perfect. I have to make sure that whatever I'm working with does not have any defects. Whatever I'm thinking, whatever thinking I have does not have any defects. <sighs> then I have to lose. Lose, L-O-S-E, lose, lose, lose. There's a middle in this word. It means to drop, leave behind, shed, to be free of, get rid of, loosen, perish, Amen. or become free. I have to lose. Come on now. If I'm going to live in the will of God, yes. which has limited possibilities, for me, I have to lose my mind. I have to transform my fear into faith. I have to renew my trust in God. I have to prove to myself that God is God. I have to perfect 
the practice of knowing that I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. Come on. I have to lose any person, place, thing, or idea that comes against my knowing. Come on now. Lose any person, place, thing, or idea that comes against my knowing. Come on, come on. I know who God is. Yes. I have to live like it though. Yes. But that's in any situation we face. I have to know that God created me as I am, that God loves me no matter what, that God provides for me, that God will supply my needs, not my wants. Watch come on, watch come on, wants. come on, come on. Your needs. Some of that stuff, you don't need it. Come on now. You just want it because you got your ego in the way. Come on now. You grieve it over stuff that you don't need it all. You ain't going to die if you ain't got it. Come on now. I wasn't going to die if I ain't had no Nikes as a kid. I had shoes on. That's right. Okay? I have to know that God protects me, that God defends me. Watch out. That God rebukes me. Uh-huh. Well. Uh, I'll be doing right all the time. I have to know that God is true to the promise of favor. God ain't never lied. God ain't never lied. God ain't never lied. Mm -hmm. I have to lose anything that comes against any of this. Don't let what's around you get you confused or caught up. That's right. God is dot, 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 dot. Paul didn't want the Romans to get confused, so they belong to God. And they need to remember that. Even in the circus that Rome was at the time, it was a whole circus. Amen. With the music and all. Rome was, woo. Just like America is a whole circus right now. With its good and its bad parts. We like some parts of the circus, circus, but we don't like that part of the circus where the animals just kind of mess over, mess over everything and they poop in front of us and we got to sit there and look at it and smell it and see. We don't like that part. But we like the popcorn and the cotton candy. That's right. We like the trapeze and the ladies jumping around and, and we like the tigers that's so pretty. But we don't like, you know, we don't like all the, all the, the bad and nasty smell stuff. Yeah, whole circus right now, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Don't get it confused. Don't you get caught up in the circus. What I usually do is I tell myself, look, mm -hmm. this ain't my quiet and my concert. Oh, come on. Because I'm a quiet and so I, I don't get it now. Come on. Now. In the matters of life, faith, and trust in God, you must recalibrate. You must shift. That's move. Right. Go. Grow. Stop. That's go. Right. Leave. Let go. And you must lose well, your mind. Come on. So ask yourself, have you lost your mind? Have you lost your mind? Let me share a little bit of research on this. So Dr. Daniel Siegel, professor of psychiatry at UCLA School of Medicine, uh -huh. he coined this term mindsight back in the day to describe how our human capacity to understand how the mind works. Mm -hmm. He says that the mind is only one of three parts of a person's mind sight. Well, your mind is only one part of your mind sight. Well. The brain, our relationships. Well. And our mind all work together. Each point of this triangle is essential to our mental health. You wonder well, why you're going crazy because you're probably only using one part of your mind sight. Well, so, mind sight is kind of like a lens, like a focused attention, like well, that allows us to see the internal workings of our own minds. It helps us to get ourselves off of autopilot, of ingrained in behaviors and habits and stuff. It lets us name and tame the emotions we're experiencing rather than being overwhelmed by them. Here's how the triangle works. So I want you to pay close attention here. So with the brain, we take information in, right? It gives us signals and regulates our body and whatnot. Our relationships are how we share information, right? So that's brain right, and relationships. Right, right. How we write, speak, and body language passes all that, right? And then there's the mind. That's the process that observes and monitors and regulates the flow of energy and information. The mind controls the flow and the energy and what you put in the brain, right? Right. So, let me make it even more plain. Think about driving. To drive regulation, mm -hmm. to drive a car, right. that's your brain. Right. To be aware of the car's motion and position in traffic or anywhere else, that's relationship. Right. To be able to influence how it moves, your mind controls that. Right. But pay attention. If your hands are on the wheel, but you're texting, uh -huh. you can make the car move, but you're not really driving it because driving means regulating the car's movement. You're not really paying attention. Right. Because you're texting. Right. You can't put all your energy on driving because you're texting. If your eyes are open, but you're sitting in the back seat, right? Right. 
You are monitoring the movement of the car, but you can't modify the motion because you're not driving. That's right. So, if you're in a situation and you're panicking, right? Mm -hmm. You can act, and you can do stuff. Like, we usually scream, holler, slap people. You know, we do a lot of stuff when we panic. But you're not doing it rationally because you're not focused. Well, Panic freezes your rationale, and it limits your ability to conquer the situation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Look, if your life gets a bump, and you're doubting God, right? Mm -hmm. You can make a decision, but not the best one for your life. Because your doubt is influencing you to choose the negative over the proven positive well, that God is infinitely. Come on now. Infinity means forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and on and on and on and on and on. Amen. So if I get stuck in a situation and I hit a, a rough patch and I'm doubting, 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 doubting who I am or who God is to me. Uh-huh. If I get too caught up in that, I'm going to make decisions based on that. Amen. And then if I keep doing that, then all I'm going to get back is that. That's right. Instead of the power and proven positive that God is. Mm-hmm. And if I put a God is in front of that rough oh, patch, I'm going to see it differently. Oh, come on. I'm going to lose my mind and gain Speak, something Master else. Leslie. Speak. Yeah, 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 yeah. The mind can change the structure of the brain and relationships. Amen. The brain can change the structure of the mind and relationships. Relationships can change the mind and the brain. Amen. Relationships. Come on. When is the last time you and God went out on a date? Come on, speak now. How y'all relationship doing? Y'all be nosy about everybody else's. Man. What about you and God's relationship? How y'all doing? Preach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep God in it. Keep God in it. Just keep Always. God in it. Keep God in it. Yeah. Another way of looking at the mind is looking at the process you use to make decisions. Come on now. Ask yourself if you're making a decision with your mind Come or on. with your heart. Well. Since we can separate feelings from the mind and brain function, Amen. we can eliminate love-centered emotions to affect our behavior. You can ask yourself, what would my mind or sense of logic want me to do? You can ask yourself, what does your logic want you to do? Mm -hmm. Or what does your heart want you to do? Well. My logic. My heart. Uh -huh. My logic. My heart. Well. My logic. My heart. But what you got to realize is God owns the both of them. Come on. The both of them. God Come owns on. the both of them. Come on. But if you spend too much time over here, and my logic, my logic, my... You don't know everything. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know everything. Amen. What you ought to do is get over here in your feelings, in your heart, get in your feelings about who God is to you. Amen. And let that inform your logic. Amen. A lot of people leave with their minds, with their mindset, with their brain, and they don't follow their hearts. That's why we're in jobs we don't like. That's why we're in relationships we don't like. That's why we got houses we can't pay for because a friend told us we was following somebody else's logic and made the wrong decision for our lives. Come That's on, why God. we haven't graduated from school. But let somebody Come talk on. us out of it. That's Come why on. we're mistreating people because we're following other people's footsteps. Well, but when we follow with our heart and what feels yes. right, and yes. what feels good, and what feels like God, what feels yes. like God, what feels like God, what feels like God, it can inform our brain and our relationships. Amen. Here are three suggestions on how to lose your mind. Come on now. Teach us. Number one, turn it down. <laughs> turn, your, turn your mind down. Turn it down. The same when you turn the music down when you're trying to hear somebody talk. Hint, hint. Hello. Turn, turn your mind down so God can talk to you. Well. Use the law of attraction. It's a very popular thought, but that's just round, that's round and that's for a circular, circular reasoning. Uh huh. And when you put God in there, I mean, you can't lose. Come on now. You know? Your thoughts really do matter. That's right. Add your track record for God to the law of attraction. I really, well, I am really encouraged by the law of attraction, but I also know God. That's right. And I'm attracted to the idea that God is able and hey, God come on. can do it and God will and come God on. has. I'm attracted to that thought. Amen. And the law of attraction says once you speak a thing, huh. speak those things that nice. I mean, once you speak it and put it out there, it's coming. It's going to come right back to you. So if, I, if I'm talking to God and say, you, you, no, you are, you, 
Yeah, you, 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 right? If I'm, if I'm doing that all the time, God's going to talk back to me. It's going to be a whole back and forth. That's you ever right. had a conversation with somebody who got to have last word? That's so right. treat that, treat your relationship with God like that. That's all I'm saying, God, is God like, well, Lord, I'm, but listen to what I'm saying. And then you go back, listen to what I'm saying. I love you, Lord. Listen to what I'm saying. I love you back. Listen to what I'm saying. Go back and forth. That's right. That's right. That's what you do on dates. You talk and you communicate and chat and get to know people. That's what courtship is. That's right. Ah, well, last time you and God went on a date. Yeah. Come on now. So number one, turn it down. Turn your mind down. Philippians 4, 8, and 9 says this. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, Whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. That's right. And the God of peace will be with you. There it is right there. Bam. Amen. In plain Greek, black and white paper. Hey. Okay? Yes. Number two, take it slow. Mm. Take it slow. Be easy on yourself and give yourself permission to feel the range of emotions. Just don't get stuck there. Right. We get stuck. We panic and we get stuck. You can't get stuck. That's right. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Uh -huh. And lead not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and you will direct your path. Amen. Now, I don't know whether God's in here or not, but God is God. That's but right. if I trust God, or whatever, It'll be a he some days and a she some other days, but I know God's God. If I'm That's trusting right. God and I'm not trying to be in charge, That's right. God is better at this whole creation. That's right. I run the world thing than me. That's God's right. much better at that than me. So I'm going to go right. with God. I'm going to go with the master. Understand? That's right. All right. Number three, talk it over. Number four, let me go back. Number one, turn your mind down. Number two, take it slow with your mind. Uh -huh. Number three, talk it over. Talk it over. Come on. Make conversation with God on regular day night. Yes. Have a little talk with Jesus. Yes. Tell him all about your trouble. He often cries. And to by and by, fill the prayer with journey. Some, 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 some fire burning. <laughs> Have a little talk with Jesus. Yes. Cousin God, kind of, but um, but if you're real, God, God knows that you really don't mean it disrespectfully. God right. really just wants you to talk. Teach, you understand? Teach, so teach. speaking your language, uh, you teach. probably won't get too profane. Once you spill your heart out, you teach. won't spend all that time being profane. Teach. Most people who are speaking profanely, which means they're cussing the can out, are just really hurting. That's in right. In need of something, in need of That's love, right. properly. But teach. they're trying to talk to you the best way they can. And they figure that that way of talking is the only way you're going to listen. Teach. God's going to listen regardless. Teach. So just keep the conversation regular. That's Essentially, right. it all comes down to this one verse that I've read in Matthew. It's right after the Lord's Prayer, somewhere after Jesus was talking about worrying and whatnot. Jesus said, Seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom of God, God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Ah, come on. If you seek God, the rest of sweet potato pie. Y'all know sweet potato pie is good. It's good. I like Amen. these. I'm talking about pie. I'm going to have some patty pot this week. That's kind of like. Amen. It's just that sweet. Seeking God is just That's that, that sweet. sweet. The Come Romans on. didn't know Paul, okay? He wanted them to know him and hear him out. He had a message for those who were trying Jesus out. He wanted them to win and see it through. Now, they would have to lose their old mindsets and do something different. It was crucial at the time that they looked at things uh -huh. in new ways with new hearts and new eyes. Yes. Okay? There's a lot of argument and debate over what Paul says in Romans and what he meant, right? Mm -hmm. And how it informs us today. But that's not important. People yeah. are going to be arguing over what the Bible says or what God says. That, we ain't got time for all that. That's right. It doesn't matter how long they debate. That's you right. know who God is to you. That's right. You see the favor of God every day you that's wake right. up. I'm just here to encourage you to keep doing that. That's right. Because anything else is contrary. Mm -hmm. Have you let go of doubt in God? Have you? Like, think about it. Like, we have basically, like, human doubt and stuff. But some of us doubt all the time. Like, we forget, like, you see a new mercy and favor every morning. Like, you open your eyes today. Mm -hmm. If you don't do nothing but be alive today, that's favor, right? 
Mm -hmm. So when I became a mother, I have an 18 year old daughter, Judah, I love her so much. Mm -hmm. I understood my mother better. Right. Right? She did the best she could with what she had to give us. That's right. She really did. And when I really look at the situation, I'm like, we didn't have Nikes and all that fancy stuff. We had clean clothes that fit. That's right. That looked looked decent on us. She made sure we was together. And That's when I right. think about that food, I think about the fact that my mother would go to the more affluent neighborhoods to shop to get the better selections of name of name brand or store brand. Uh-huh. So she didn't shop in the stores that had the poor meat and right. had the, 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 the dented cans and all that, which is fine. But she took her back. I grew up with the food stamp books, books, uh -huh. the ten to five to one. She would spread her coupons and her food stamp books on the counter, and and the little registered lady would have an attitude, but she'd be like, "There you go." And she took pride. That's right. In shopping. That's right. But she let her circumstances tell her where she was going to shop at. That's so right. we shopped in the more affluent supermarkets and got the choices stuff because that's where they put the choices stuff. Uh huh. So she showed us the, the, the better size of life in those environments. Uh -huh. She would take us to the mall, and yeah, we would window shop, but I also remember her going in the best stores to the clearance rack, uh -huh. Come and on she now. would slide one or two things off that rack for us so that we could at least dress up on Christmas and Easter. The black church know what that is. Amen. That's like a whole holiday. Amen. She made sure that we couldn't dress fancy the rest of the year. On Christmas and Easter, we was laid out. That's right. She also put away money every week in the Christmas club. And at Christmas time, she got us good, nice gifts. She taught us the value of working towards something that you want. That's right. She got up every morning and went out to work. She didn't start working while we were young. She was out hitting that pavement. She was also doing outreach work. She was visiting the sick. And she was making meals for the kids in the neighborhood. She was praying in the church all day. She was being who she was supposed to be. That's right. The church administrator, the lady, and to this day, she'll be 75 next year. People who were children at that time still remember Sister Oliver for the things she did, right? Mm -hmm. So she was setting an example. She set an example for praise and worship. She was a devotional leader. She set an example for... Uh, prayer warriors. I saw all of that. So there was a lot that I was able to see as a mother myself because I had to do the same thing for my child. Wow. Right? I'm, I'm in a bit, a bit of a better situation. Wow. But my daughter, who is 18 now, is starting to understand by bit by bit the benefits of the way she was raised, even though it was wow. ideal for her as a kid. Well, right? Well. And we turned out fine. Like, it was other people's mindsets that stepped in the front of us sometimes. Come on now. Okay? Come on. I turned out, to, I don't know, I turned out to be an amazing woman. I Amen. turned out to be great. Amen. And Amen. I, you know. Amen. I turned out to be also great. And so, Amen. it helps me stay grounded. And when I get confused, I have to lose my mind. I have to forget about, you know, False perceptions and things like that. Amen. And when I think about other not so happy points in my life, I have to remember that I was covered and kept. Amen. I was kept. God kept me, and that reminds me that when those thoughts come up, when I begin to doubt myself and doubt what I have, I have to remember that I'm I'm blessed, right? So I want to ask you again: Have you lost your mind? Amen. No. Have you Have you lost your mind? Come on. When was the last time you put your mind to the side? Take God's mindset. Amen. Take God's loving and unconditional, all-knowing mindset Amen. into your world, into your day. Amen. I don't know, but God sure know. Amen. I can't do it, but I know God can do it. Amen. I ain't got it, but I know God got it. I, amen. You can't lose that way. Amen. So as I come to a close, I want you to think about that. Amen. You lose your mind sometimes. Amen. And we know how we get. Amen. I'm a thinker. Like I. I'm an internal person, so I'm always thinking about something. Amen. And it probably rests my mind when I'm sleeping or I'm doing art or something. At Amen. House. But some of us think way too much. We read too much into stuff. Mm -hmm. And we always think it. I'm, I'm guilty of it. Amen. And I had to train my mind to stop. Amen. And eventually, some parts of my mind, I had to let them go. I had to lose it. Amen. And my life is so much better. I'm relaxed more. Amen. So I want to encourage you to lose your mind. And take the mind of God and let that bless you onward. Let's give Amen. God a wave Amen. or an emoji Amen. or a hallelujah in the heart place Amen. as we welcome our pastor back Amen. to your front. Thank you for your time. Just remember.
Lose your mind sometimes. And when things get crazy, just ask yourself. Amen. Have you lost your mind? Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Leslie, for that awesome word. Have you lost your mind? Amen. Amen. Some of us uh, are familiar with that. Uh, amen. And that's what mommy used to say all the time before she starts swinging her bell. Have you lost your mind? And amen. And I think sometimes what we need to do is to lose our minds. Amen. Let's do this. Let me not... Uh, uh, miss the chance here to lead someone to Christ. Amen. Someone this morning, as you were watching this sermon, amen, you realize that the problem, the reason why you aren't walking in what God wants you to walk in is because you still have the same mind that you did yesterday, the week before, uh, the month before, the year before. At some point, you have to lose your mind and to uh, gain God's mind. Now, the way to do that, amen, the simplest way to do that, God has given you a, a, a pathway, a doorway, a method, a method uh, to utilize in order to gain his mind. And you do that by first believing in your heart and then confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So, in your heart, I want to lead you in this prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, I thank you for today, for this is the day that you have made, God. I am rejoicing. I am glad. And Father God, I declare right now that I have a mind, God, that needs to be lost and found. I need to lose all of those things, God, that are uniquely of me that have kept me estranged and separated and, and, and relegated from you, God. And I need to pick up your mind. I need to pick up your thoughts. I need to inherit your grace and your mercy. I need to possess uh, your love, God, so that I may, may be who you call me to be, that I may walk in faith, I may talk in faith, that I may operate in faith, that I may be the disciple and steward. That helps, that helps someone else, God, find you. But God, I need you. So God, right now, with my mouth, I confess, God, that I'm a sinner. With my mouth, I confess that I have not always done the right thing. I confess, God, with my mouth, that I have gone astray and that all my righteousness is but filthy rats. I confess it right now. And not only do I confess it, but I believe it. I'm not just speaking the words, but I'm believing the words, uh, the, believing the word that, God, you have for me. And, God, I ask right now that you would come into my life, that you would come in, that you would cleanse me, that you would purify me, that you would purge me, that you would do everything that you need to do, God, so that, God, when I walk out this place, walk out this door, go back to my, uh, in the incidents of my life, that I go back changed, I go back transmogrified, I go back transformed, I go back reformed, I go back conformed to your image, to your will, to your way, so that, God, I may be a person of purpose, and I may be an agent of your spiritual grace and mercy. And Father God, I ask right now that after, God, you do what you need to do in me and with me, that you would personally come get me and take me back to heaven with you. It's in your son's mighty matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer for the first time today, that's what we call a prayer, a, a, a sinner's prayer, prayer of forgiveness. That's the prayer of salvation. Every one of us that you see uh, walking in the spirit, operating in the spirit of God has had to pray that prayer. And what we want you to do, if you were here, I would have you come right now in the middle of the aisle, but we're not here. We're in pandemic uh, isolation. We, we're, we're in uh, uh, quarantine. Amen. Uh, so what I want you to do, we, we're not going to let the fact that you may not be here physically stop you from beginning your walk in salvation. If you're on YouTube, this is what I want you to do. I want you to send me an email to my email address, tollyakennonthe3rd at gmail.com, T-O-L-L-Y. 
A-K-E-N-N-O-N-I-I-I -I -I at gmail.com. Uh, send me an email. Tell me that today you were set to Christ and we will begin the process of walking together. If you're on Facebook and today is the first day that you met Christ, the first day that you experienced Christ, send me a private message to my Facebook account. Amen. My name is Al Kennan on Facebook. Amen. A-L-K-E. N -N -O -N. Send me a private message and we'll walk with you uh, through social, through the private message feature on social media. Amen. Here's the thing. I say it all the time and I'll continue to say it. In the natural, we do not birth babies and sit them in the corner and tell them to raise themselves. In fact, we birth babies and we nurture them. We provide for them. We protect them. We allow them to mature and grow into full adults where they can care for themselves. Same thing. In the spirit, we don't. God is a birth babies and we just sit them over here in the corner. No, we walk with you, we grow you, we educate you, we protect and provide for you till you be can become a mature disciple and steward in Christ Jesus and are able to serve him, uh, amen, as he has called you to serve. And, and together we will be the body of Christ that God has called us to be. Amen. Amen. Let's do this.